Hi there, it's Kelsey with Shipwreck Beads, and today we are going to play with Vintage Patina inks and some of their great components. We've got some other good tools here that we'll play around with. And if you've never used Vintage Patina inks before, they're so much fun and so easy to use. Um, we'll, I'm going to talk a little bit until more people get signed on so that we can actually have some people watching. Oh look, we've got one person's watching now, yay! Um, anyways, so we've got Vintage Patina, I've got a uh, great selection of inks, I've got, um, anyways, let's talk about uh, tool preparation, the tools that you'll need to do this type of project. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of hammering as well to add some texture to one of the Vintage pieces that I have. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the tools and supplies that you'll need to get prepared for that. Um, first off, I just want to say that I'm so excited because Bead Fest is next weekend, guys. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to be teaching six different make and takes all weekend long in our Shipwreck Beads Inspiration Playground. They're only $5, so if you're in the area and want to check out Bead Fest, then, you can, um, then you're in for a, a, great, a great thing. Um, again, the make and takes are $5.00. And if you go on our website, or sorry, on our Facebook page um, and on our blog, we had some exclusive cus um, coupons for Shipwreck Beats customers. You can see in the bins behind my head here, I've got uh, a whole bunch of product pulled for the different kits for the make and takes that I'll be doing. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit more about that either Friday or next Wednesday. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I hope you guys can come. Um, I've never taught at a bead show or even actually gone to a bead show before, so this is a really exciting new experience for me. And I hope to get to meet some of you who watch these videos. It should be really fun and exciting, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's next weekend, um, the 14th, 15th, and 16th up at the Convention Center in Tacoma, Washington. So let's get on with our project today. I'll talk a little bit about the tools that I have to um, to use for this project. Um, as far as the vintage patinas, you need a cup of water to rinse your brushes. You need some paint brushes, and you can see my paint brushes are a little on the sad side because whenever my daughter comes to visit me at work, that's usually what she gets into is the vintage patinas. She loves to play with them. Um, I've got a selection of the inks. I've got them all stored in this little Tupperware. Um, one great tip is if you take your vintage inks and put a little dot on the cap, then that you can easily identify which color that you need. Um, but today I think we'll mostly be using the verdigris, marine, and onyx. They are sold in three packs and I believe each of these colors come in a different three pack, unfortunately. Um, but there's some really great colors to play with some pretty, this one's carnelian. So again, yeah, you just put the little dot on the top there and that helps you identify just from a glance what you're doing or what ink you'll be using. I've got my Vintage Sanding Block. Um, this one has been well used and loved, um, but it comes in its white. And uh, But yeah, this one I've used a lot, so it is a little on the dirty side, but it's still very functional and so we're gonna use that. Let's see, I've got my nonstick craft sheet. So I use this for all of my painting projects. As you can see, it's a great um, work surface. I think it can also go in the oven. So if you do polymer clay, this is a great work surface to use. Um, and then it does wash off pretty easily. I just haven't washed this one in a while. So. so I've got that. I also have a hammer. This is a great tool. It's a 12-piece um, texturizing hammer. And you can see the ends actually screw off and you can change the head of the hammer. So it comes with 10 different attachments, or sorry, 12 different attachments and the different textures. So I've got, this one's got some rounded, got some lines here, concentric circles. This one has sort of cross shape. And then there's some just regular, like a ball peen or daffine, whatever. Um, so you can get different textures when you're working with metals. And so one of the Vintage pieces that I have for these earrings is, um, I'll just show you. So this one, it doesn't have any texture on it. And really with these Vintage inks, um, you wanna have a piece with lots of texture because that helps it sort of, the, the ink and 
it helps it sort of come out and, and make it more visible and it just adds a lot of interest to it. So we're going to make some, these are really large, but I think they'll make cool earrings. Um, so you can see the earrings I'm wearing today are using, I use the Vintage inks on this, so it's a very layered process. Um, the inks are really easy to work with. They're water-based, um, so they clean up really easily too, but they do dry very fast. Um, so you want to make sure that uh, that you work quickly. So to get started, you want to shake, shake, shake. And you can kind of hear it starts to rattle when it's mixed. But you really want to shake them really good. And I haven't used these in a while, so I'm going to shake them. And I did start shaking them earlier, so you wouldn't have to listen to me shaking these. And I'm just going to shake a bunch of all at once. get my feed mat down sorry or sorry my non-stick craft mat and one thing that's great about these craft mats is you can actually put the ink right onto the craft mat itself um, you don't have to have a separate surface to put your inks on so get those shaken up and I have my rubber mat and my hi Tara and my bench block because anytime you're doing any type of hammering, you want to have your nice hard surface underneath because you don't want to mar um, whatever your work surface is. So you don't want to mar your table. Um, I made that mistake one time hammering directly onto the table and it not only did it mess up my metal piece, but it messed up my table. So that's a not a good thing. So what we'll go ahead and do is I'm going to angle you down so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, morning, Beth. And uh, we'll get started. Oh, I hate this thing. All right. So I've got my rubber mat, and so that just basically dampens the sound so it won't be quite as loud. And then I have my hammer, so I'm going to pick two of, um, of these different heads, and you just stick them into, well, oh, come on, you. They do fit very exact, so you want to make sure and put them in evenly. Otherwise, you're going to run into this problem that I just came across, and it will get stuck. So we'll work with that later. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on. That's the magic of live video, folks. Oh, hi, Valerie. Come on, you. All right, let's try that again. There we go. So I've got this sort of like waffle print one on this side and I wanna put, if I can get this one out. So this one, I don't know that this is gonna come out because I've used it a whole lot and I used it for stamping, which is not really what this is for. Um, but it's, it's sort of bent on the side, so I can't get it out of the tool, but we'll just use this one. And so those just screw right on there. Let's see. <laughs> the human element, yes. Well, I'm very human, so. All right, so what you're going to do, and I, I see that there's a lot of reflection there, um, but you're going to take your metal piece and put it down on your bench block. And what I usually do is I will tape it down too. Um, I have on more than one occasion accidentally hammered my finger and that really hurts. So I don't recommend it. So um, it's a good idea to just kind of tape it in place and that will prevent you from uh, hammering your fingers or you can just be really careful. Um, but I'm, I'm not usually the most careful person. So um, I do actually keep a full first aid kit in my desk. I've got rubbing alcohol and cotton balls and Neosporin and lots of band-aids um, and I've come in handy more than once. So um, we'll go ahead and get hammering. You can see sort of I've got this taped on there. And just kind of start giving it some texture. So you just want to lightly hammer the surface. Actually, I'm going to go grab another hammer real quick. So we 
also have this brass stamping hammer. Um, I was going to switch out and put the rounded head on the other side, but because I can't get this little guy out of here, so I'm just going to use my brass stamping hammer. I'm just hammering along the edge, so I don't know if you can kind of see, it's just starting to give it a little bit of texture there. You don't want to hammer too hard because you can bend your piece out of shape and so you don't want to do that you want to keep the shape of what it is that you're working on but we still want to give it some texture so I'm going to focus the rounded side around the out the outer edge and then I'm going to come back through with this waffle um, print and then go sort of through the center tape off. Go rogue here. Luckily most of my coworkers are watching this video otherwise they'd probably be wondering what it is that I'm doing and hammering in here. So you can just see I've sort of started to add some extra texture into there. It's always a good idea to pick it up and look at your progress as you go um, because you can't unhammer something. Oh, there's a sound. Oh, that's funny, Tara. So, yeah, you can't unhammer it. So, just look at your progress as you go. And this texture will really help bring out the detail when we start to add the ink. So now I'm going through with the, the waffle texture. All right, so now you can see a little bit more of the texture on there. And I don't want to do too much on there, so I think I'm going to leave that as is. And then we'll go ahead and start with this uh, other piece. Let's see. That way. So again, I'm going around the outside with the rounded edge of the hammer and then I'm going to go through the center part with a different texture. So this is not a project that I recommend at nighttime. Um, I know that's usually when I'm at home, that's when I tend to get most of my crafting time in is after I put the kid to bed, after everyone's fed, dishes are done. Um, but this is not the kind of project you want to do at night because it's obviously very loud. Um, but it's a good way to get some aggression out if you happen to have any. So. You don't need to use a lot of pressure when you're doing this so yeah living alone exactly you don't have to worry about disturbing anybody in the middle of the night when you're crafting I love the vintage pieces because they're so easy to work with um, and able to personalize 
um, where you can take sort of a really great um, basic piece and add more of a handmade touch, more of a personalized flair to it. Um, and the vintage patinas are just another way to sort of add to that. So you do want to be careful hammering around the loops because if you hammer, you can, you're going to squish the metal out a little bit um, and you don't want to damage or distort your loop at all. So make sure and watch out when you're hammering around those really thin pieces um, so that you don't mess up your, your piece and make it unusable. Hi Pam, how are you doing today? See, you want to make sure, I mean, they're each going to be different because obviously they're both very handmade, um, but you want to make sure that you've got sort of the same amount of texture and that they do look similar, but again, they don't have to be exact. So I've got my two pieces. You can kind of see the texture on them. I'm trying to give you sort of an angle. You can see the texture in there. And this waffle print sort of gives you some square type designs. Um... And again, the different heads will give you different looks when you're texturing. So again, this one has sort of a concentric circle. This one gives a really nice subtle print. It's got some like cross hatching in it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that you can do with these different textures. And even just at using the rounded end of your hammer will give you some nice texturing as well. So we'll go ahead and move my mat and my bench block out of the way. And we'll go ahead and get started with painting. Oh, I wish that glare was not so bad. All right, so basically with these, you're just going to paint them on. Um, and I also have some other pieces here. Um, just a really pretty, already very textured. And so it's, it's sort of a multi-step process and you can layer as many or as few colors as you want. Again, with the patinas, you want to give them a really good shake before you get started. All right. So for these, I think, let's see to get started. And again, you can get different effects with different types of paintbrushes. This is just what we carry in store, but you can find them. Obviously paintbrushes, you can find them just about anywhere. Um, and again, my daughter, whenever she comes, likes to play with my patina inks, but she doesn't take care of my brushes. So these ones are a little, they're a little sad. So we'll probably just not use those. So first, And you can mix these colors too. You don't have to use them straight out of, yeah, they are an alcohol ink, but the difference is, is these are um, opaque. So they're not quite, they're going to give you a more flat finish than your typical alcohol inks. Um, let's see. So with this craft mat, you can put your ink directly onto the craft mat and I'm just giving this a little mix with my um, the tip of my ink bottle just because it's been a while since I used them so it did still they could have used a little more mixing so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna pick up some of the paint with my brush and this is just a dry brush and I'm just gonna sort of brush it on And this is a little bit of a messy project, so hopefully you don't mind getting your fingernails a little painted. So what I like to do when I'm layering on these inks is I'll paint a layer on. And again, add as much or as little as you want, and you can experiment with that. And just let it dry for a few seconds, and then I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe some of that color off. And 
And one tip too is you can take the um, patina glaze and extender and use that to sort of wipe some of the color off if you get it to where you don't like it because it does dry pretty fast. So you can see this one dried a lot because this one sat while I was talking. So that one's got a lot more color on it. And it can also be helpful to, um, to sort of help your ink stay a little longer if you clean them with rubbing alcohol before you get started because that will wipe off any oils left over from your hand or from the manufacturing process. Just add a little more ink. So it is a good idea just to put a small drop on your work mat because this ink does dry so fast. Oh, good tip, Christy. Thank you. I will try that. So I'm just starting with my base color and I want to have this nice dark. Let's see, this one is the verdigris. This will give you sort of a really nice sort of natural patina look. And you just can layer on the colors and sort of wipe them on and then take more off. And yeah, Simone, they're a lot of fun to play with. You'll get really addictive and need to have every color. So you can see this is what we've got now. And now I've got the, what color is this? I'm rinse my brush off. So you just clean your brushes with water. And again, you want to make sure and rinse them fairly regularly because this ink does dry really fast. So this is the marine color. It's a really light blue. 15 colors, yeah. Well, here, here's my collection. And some of these, I think, are discontinued now, but... Um, I sort of collect them whenever we get new colors into the store. So I've got quite a collection. And uh, again, great tip if you weren't watching at the very beginning. Put a dot of your patina color on the cap. I know, Tara, I can't wait. I was looking, I was hoping they were here today, but they're not. So unfortunately, uh, we'll just have to wait to play with those. But yeah, put a little dot of your color on the cap. And then you can identify which color it is by just looking at it. Um, if you do have your stored in a container, kind of like mine, um, it can be kind of hard to tell which color it is when they're all black caps. So, um, so we'll go ahead and add some of this color in. And I don't want to add too much. So I'm going to wipe this off really quickly because I don't want to add too much of this light color. And you can wipe or you can dab. Again, it's going to give you different looks. And I'll probably go back through and add some more of the verdigris next. <laughs> the tip. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be punny. Actually, I think I learned that tip on the Vintage website. If you go to their site, they've got some really great design ideas and tips and tricks. Um, they also have a really great mixing chart for the different colors so that you can mix them to create some really fabulous new colors. how that's kind of coming along there. I think I want to add some black to that just to add uh, some more dimension. And again, using, if we, I really wish at this point that I had a, a stiff bristled brush because I think that would give some really great um, texture Woo to 
the piece, but we don't have that, so I'm working with what I have here. And this one is the onyx, so it's a black. Oh no. I need a head pin. So sometimes the tips get clogged and you just gotta stick a head pin in there to clean it out. Just gonna add a little bit of black. And I'll probably add some more of the verdigris on top of that. Come on, you. See what's going to happen is I'm going to squeeze this and then it's going to all come dumping out at once. So I don't want it to be black. I just want to have a little bit of shading and dimension. So I'm not going to let this dry very much on there. I'm going to wipe it right away. See what we've got going on here. Put some little little more dimension on that. I'll go ahead and add some black to this piece. And it's okay if they don't look the same because again you want it to have that sort of handmade, very natural type look to it. Super fun to play with. All right, so now I've got my two pieces and I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of the verdigris color on the top before I go after it with my, uh, with my sanding block. Make sure and put your caps back on because again, this stuff does dry really fast. And if you leave it open, that's what causes the uh, tips to get clogged. Again, I'm not going to let that dry on there. And I'm just going to dab it off. But you can see how that sort of ooh, just adds some extra dimension with those other colors underneath. It gives you some really interesting texture and coloring. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sanding block. Um, each of the four sides has different grits for sanding and polishing and whatnot. Um, and I'm going to go along the outside. And what this is going to do is it's going to take away some of that color and reveal the brass underneath. <laughs> Thanks, Gerald. I wear it all the time. I love it. And you can go over the top too, and so that will sort of start to reveal some of that texturing that we did. And look at that sort of how that brass is coming around. And you can see it's just starting to brighten up the whole piece. I want to get inside this little center part too. I'm glad you made it, Carla. 
So we do live videos every Wednesday at 1030 and every Friday at 4. I'd love to hear your suggestions for what we should do this Friday. I've got some things that I've been wanting to do, but I'd love to, to hear what you guys would like to see. Um, Cause that's the whole point really is to, to show you guys techniques and tools and, and whatever you're interested in. I'm just going to go lightly over the top cause I don't want to take away too much of that color, but I do want to see some of that hammered texture that we put into it. So you can see how that's sort of coming out. So here is the hammer or the one that I took the sanding block to compared to the one that uh, we haven't sanded yet. So you can see how this one just sort of makes the color pop by having that that bright the brass sort of come through and you can really see the texturing that we did on the piece as I drop it. So now we'll go ahead and come back through on this second piece. Again, we're just kind of going around the outside because we don't want to take too much of the color off on the in intersection, but we do want to bring through that brass and that texture that we, we put in. Go through the center part. All right. So then just to compare, just to make sure we've kind of got the same amount of color and texture on both, go back through and just kind of give it a rub over on the top. And there you go. So these, I'm just going to add some earring wires to these to make some quick earrings, but you can always add some chain or a little charm in the center. And I do want to, uh, I'm going to do a second piece of, with the vintage patinas in a couple different colors, just because it's just fun and I want to demonstrate some of the other colors that we have too. So these ones, you can see this piece already has texture to it. So we don't need to add, so we don't need to hammer it or do anything to that. Um, and that's the earrings that I'm wearing right now. You can see. So for myself, I don't ever put any type of sealer on this, but if you're going to be selling them, uh, making jewelry for sale, you really want to add, um, you really want to add a, a a top coat or a sealer to it. Vintage makes a patina sealer, um, but I'm going to let these dry a little bit more before I apply it. Um, you can also find at craft stores spray acrylic sealer, which is really easy to apply. I mean, it's just in the spray paint section. You can actually get it at hardware stores too. Um, and so that you can use to, to seal off your pieces as well. And that, so that'll give a little more life to it. Um, people can be really hard on their jewelry. I know, especially I am. And, uh, just to sort of extend the life, you want to put that sealer on it. Um, anytime you're putting any type of paint or coating, it's probably not going to last forever, especially if you're going to wear it in the shower or swimming or, you know, all that stuff that people tend to do in their jewelry um, that they shouldn't. So what I'm going to do first before I start to paint it is I'm going to sand over my block or sand over my piece just so you can see when you take away that antiquing how cool it looks. Because really some of these pieces are so pretty that you don't necessarily even add, need to add paint. I mean, just look right now, just by doing a little bit of sanding on that, how that really takes the antiquing off that the raised surfaces and gives you a really nice um, color and dimension. So here's sort of the difference between the two. You can see this is the one I sanded over here and this is the one I haven't. You can just see the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and sand over the top of this too. And with these patinas, if you have a really fine um, paintbrush, you can always go in and actually paint in um, specific areas and get some really cool effects. Um, a lot, some of the vintage pieces are really cool. Um, let's see what we've got here. This is my box of vintage samples that I've collected over the years. So here's one of the pieces they make. It's got a really uh, nice sort of, what is that, a mermaid? A girl? I don't know. 
But if you take a fine brush, you can actually color in the different elements and have a really nice painted piece. So there's a lot you can do with it. It's, it's really fun to use. It's really easy to use. Again, my daughter who is 10 absolutely loves using my patina inks. So let's go with sort of a fall palette here. And you want to not throw them on the ground. But you can hear this one is not has not been mixed and you can't hear the little ball in the center. So as you mix them, see the difference between the sound? Shake, 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 shake those inks. All right, I'm done. But we do need to shake these a little bit more. I see a laughing face. I love that when you guys do the the different likes or hearts or whatever, you can see them sort of floating across the screen. I love that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's a lot of shaking. So these colors that I have is the Cinnabar, which is this sort of rusty red color. I've got Earth, which is a nice brown, chocolatey brown. Carnelian is this kind of bright orange. And then Ochre. Let's see, do we want to have... I think I want this one too. And this one is the Clay. So it needs to be mixed. It's, you can see sort of the different colors have separated. Give those a shake. And again, you can stick them right on this nonstick craft mat. So I really like this clay color. It's a very rusty, sort of old, very fall color. And we're just gonna paint that on there. If you can kind of see, it does look a lot like, like rust. Just dab it off. Dabbing it off is going to remove a lot less color than if you wipe it off. And it also kind of whatever um, paper or tissues or whatever you're using will leave some of that texture behind. So that's a nice sort of added bonus too. See, my fingers are a nice, pretty color, too. <laughs> it might stain your fingernails or clothing, so do try and be careful when you're using it. I mean, that's kind of true with any type of paint, so you want to make sure and not get that all over the place. Now we'll add a little bit of this ochre color. It's just really fun to play around with the different color combinations. Um, I've used the Vintage inks before, so you can go on our blog, which you can find the link to on our website, or it's just lucensecraftblog.com, um, and just search Vintage Patina, and you'll see the different projects that I've done with the Vintage Patinas. Um, they're really great for sort of jazzing up some boring pendants. Um, these Vintage ones aren't so boring, but some of the, you know, just base metal silver pendants that you can buy that can be really pretty but they are kind of lacking they just look manufactured and they're not they don't necessarily have that same handmade edge so adding some of the inks oh I don't I don't get my fingernails manicured I'm too cheap and lazy for that <laughs> but yeah you don't want to ruin your manicure if you do have a, a nice manicure um, Oh, let's see, I want some more of this clay color. And just get some really nice texture. Rinse the 
fresh off. Let's see. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's why I don't usually waste the time on getting my nails done because I, I ruin them so fast. I do like the gel manicures, but because the color stays really nice for a really long time, but unfortunately my nails grow really fast. And so after a couple days, it's not really any good for me anyways. So I just don't waste the time. This is a nice sort of rusty red color. We have a real nice fall color palette here. My friend Tara, who's actually watching right now, she always has the gel manicures and she gets the coolest colors. She likes to do the um, color change. So when they're at room temperature, they're one color. And when they get cold, they turn another color. They're so cool. I'm always so jealous, but. Add a little bit of this brown. Let's see. If you ever mix it. Oh yeah, you can definitely mix the two. Yeah, you can definitely mix the ink colors, Mary. Um, if you go on the Vintage website, they've got a really great color chart where it shows you sort of the mixing ratios to get some different colors. But yeah, you can totally mix these and come up with your own colors. And um, yeah, definitely. And they've got some really great recipes on their their site for that. Uh oh. All right. So I think I'm about done adding colors to these ones. I might add a little bit more of this yellow in. Just kind of mix in the colors. on there. All right, and now I'm going to take my sanding block to it again. And so you do usually want to wait till it's a little more dry than what I'm doing now. Um, you want to make sure that the color is set before you start to And if you're not quite happy with it, you can always go through and layer some more colors on top. But that's a really nice sort of fall palette. Add some crystals to that. I think it would be really pretty. Let's see what I have on my desk already. Let's see. How that looks. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's add some pearls. Me with the cranberry color pearls. I've got some of these crystals. I don't know. Let's find out. Got some head pins here. And I've got my one step looper tool. This is the 0.2 or 2.2. <laughs> Hello. 2.25 loop. This is such a great tool. If you've never used it, it takes all of the guesswork out of making simple loops. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna string your bead on your head pin, just like that. You don't need to bend it or do anything. And then on this tool, there's a little loop hole on the side. You're gonna go through the hole and then uh, under the pin, over the teeth. Oh, I put it in backwards. Oh, happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful live show. So you're going to go that way, and then it comes out the hole on the back. And then you squeeze. And then this part drops away. 
You're going to give your bead a tilt back and that makes your loop. So it will we'll leave a little bit of an opening, but that's okay because we need to have something to hang it from. And it looks like I'm going to need to add a jump ring on that. So with the jump rings, you want to hold it with the loop facing upwards. Well, I'm, I'm real. What can I say, Carla? I can't do it any other way. <laughs> and you're going to open from side to side. It's going to fit through. And it's not. That's too thick of a gauge of jump ring. All right, I've got some smaller jump rings here because I was prepared today. Well, for that anyways. <laughs> Let's see, all right. Hang that jump ring there. Sometimes when you're hanging jump rings from components, it can be a little tricky to get everything positioned right because sometimes those components can get in the way. All right. Well, that's not pretty, but it'll do for now. And we're gonna hang that bead from and we're going to close this little loop here. And so then we've got a little dangle from our earring. I'm going to just add some ear wires real fast. I have them sitting here also somewhere. And this is just a shepherd's hook ear wire. I'm just going to put that on there and pinch it shut. play around with this jump ring because it doesn't want to work. So there, you've got a nice, pretty fall pair of earrings. We'll go ahead and finish up this other one here. And as far as this pair, I think I'm just going to leave them sort of as is, but you could definitely do more with them. But these are kind of just nice as is. So we'll add an ear wire to the other one. But really, I just love to show you guys different techniques. Yeah, simple. And they can easily be dressed up to be not so simple as well. I mean, you could hang stuff from the loops on the bottom here. You could hang something from the center. You could wire wrap something in the center. This could even be a great pendant piece. And one thing that's great too is these are really lightweight. So even though they're pretty giant as far as earrings are concerned, um, they're not gonna weigh down your ears. Um, you know, I didn't on these ones, but you could definitely do the back if you wanted. Um, you can actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do the back because you can see sort of how the ink kind of leaks through. Um, so if you are selling them, those are the kind of details that you want to think about um, because finishing the back, painting the underside, doing things like that, those little details that don't really take you much extra time can really add a lot to the finished piece and really sort of elevate your jewelry to the next level. So um, it's not a bad idea to finish the back as well. But if you're just making something quick for yourself or even for a friend just to give, you know, you don't necessarily have to paint the back if you don't want to. I'm going to dry my paintbrush off. Come on, little jump ring. All right, so we'll finish off this earring and then we'll say goodbye for today.
So with these little shepherd's hook ear wires, you just can string them on, but you do want to, um, to make sure and secure that in place, just give a little pinch at the top and that will keep it from falling off. So there's some simple basic earrings. Um, and again, the ones I'm wearing today are just like these guys, but I just hung them from an ear wire. I didn't do anything else with them and they're just really pretty. Um, you don't need to really do anything else to them. But again, you can. That is the great thing about what I like to teach on these videos is just really the basic techniques so that you can take that information and expand on it and really make it your own and really make it great. There's so much you can do um, as far as making your own jewelry and personalizing it and these uh, vintage patina inks are just another way to do that. And they're so easy to use and so fun and versatile and I hope you really enjoyed this video today because I enjoyed filming it. And we will see you again on Friday. Again, if you want to share with me some of your suggestions for what you'd like to see in upcoming videos, I would love to hear them. Um, and maybe I'll pick your idea and we can go from there. So uh, make sure and let me know what you'd like to see in upcoming videos. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. And we will see you on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Have a good Wednesday and enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.